As victorious Allied forces occupied Europe, Nazi atrocities shocked the world. As a liberator of many concentration camps, beginning in Buchenwald and Mauthausen and going on through, I saw the, the uh, crematoria going with the bodies in them. I saw the dead bodies all over the place. I, I experienced the horrors of war itself. The Allies had to decide what to do with the worst of the Nazi war criminals. The U.S. argued for putting the war criminals on trial, while Great Britain and the Soviet Union favored summary executions. The U.S. position for the rule of law prevailed. We are now ready to hear the presentation by the prosecution. We ask this court to affirm by international penal action man's right to live in peace and dignity, regardless of his race or creed. The, the case, case we, we present, present is a plea of humanity to law. to law. I was then 27 years old. We shall establish... It was my first case. My defendants were 22 high-ranking SS officers. They were accused and convicted of murdering in cold blood over a million people. Now call upon the defendant. I didn't ask for the death penalty. I uh, simply asked for a new rule of law which would protect humankind against that type of criminal abuse. The charges we have brought accuse the defendants of having committed genocide. We hoped that we would lay a foundation stone saying that genocide was a crime. Crimes against humanity are punishable. Nobody is immune. The head of a state will be brought to trial. Despite the lessons of Nuremberg, the horrors continued. The 20th century unfolded as the bloodiest in recorded history. By the early 1990s, Yugoslavia had disintegrated in civil war. Although after Nuremberg, the world had said never again, once again the specter of genocide was haunting Europe. The United Nations intervened with peacekeepers and proposed an innovative tribunal to prosecute individuals for the worst of these crimes. When I arrived in The Hague, the international community and the media particularly had written off the Yugoslavia tribunal as a failure. There was a huge responsibility to get things right. I knew that if we didn't get it right, this is probably going to be the first and last attempt by the international community to set up an international criminal court. As in Nuremberg nearly 50 years earlier, the United States took the lead in supporting this new tribunal. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is now in session. Among the most widely witnessed events that Tadic was involved in, three prisoners were brutally beaten and tortured by Tadic and others using metal rods, truncheons and knives. Tadic then forced a fourth prisoner to drink motor oil from the garage and then bite off the testicles of the unconscious prisoners. As the Yugoslav Tribunal got underway, a horrific genocide broke out in Rwanda. In 1994, 800,000 people were murdered in just a hundred days. The world was slow to act and did not stop the slaughter. The international community working under UN auspices set out to bring justice to those most responsible, the leaders who gave the command to kill civilians. Besides punishment, the Yugoslav and Rwanda tribunals also helped establish an accurate historical record of what had happened through testimony and witness statements. The ad hoc or temporary tribunals were proving a success. The tribunal fatigue was setting in and the international community knew it could not set up these expensive and time-consuming tribunals forever.
1998, people from all over the world gathered in Rome to attempt something that had never been done. Create the basis for a permanent international criminal court. About 140 governments uh, showed up, and everyone who was there, I think, certainly I, uh, felt this way, knew we were part of a very historic undertaking. You had the sense that so much was at stake and so much hung in the balance, uh, and that was whether... Uh, the international community on the verge of the 21st century was going to create an institution that would have the authority to investigate and prosecute these horrific crimes or whether the whole negotiation would just implode uh, and uh, collapse. The U.S. was reluctant to join a court that might challenge its sovereignty. In these remaining days of the conference, we can still reach... At the Rome conference, the U.S. delegation pushed hard for a court where it had more control. The vote will now be closed. The machine is now closed. The delegates rejected the U.S. position and overwhelmingly approved the Rome Statute, the Constitution for the new court. It was a great victory in my mind for the rule of law, because for the first time since Nuremberg, the first time in human history a truly international criminal court had been drafted and accepted overwhelmingly by the nations in that room. But in the United States, opposition to the new court was growing stronger. Whether the ICC survives and flourishes depends in large measure on the United States. We should isolate and ignore the ICC. Tangible American interests are at risk. Our main concern should be for the president and other senior leaders responsible for our defense and foreign policy. I took it on myself to be a, a, one of my responsibilities because I felt it was so important to protect American citizens from being the subject of investigation or prosecution by this, uh, by this institution. Thank you very much for appearing. Are Americans at danger from the ICC? Well, if in fact we have a government that does plot and plan crimes against humanity or war crimes, it's U.S. courts which have first take on that. Under the complementarity principle, we'll look into this matter, we'll investigate it, we'll determine whether there's a basis for prosecution or not uh, uh, of these crimes. When I was negotiating the treaty, that was in fact one of our victories. And yet, of course, the criticism has continued. Specifically, I propose for the U.S. policy the three no's. No financial support, directly or indirectly, no collaboration, and no further negotiations with other governments to improve the statute. This approach is likely, likely to, to maximize the chances that the ICC will wither and collapse, which should be our objective. The U.S. was unable to stop other countries from signing on to the new court. First time in human history there is a permanent, independent, international criminal court with power to investigate and try perpetrators of the worst crimes, genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. When I got here, it, it was very much like this court is a baby and, and, and it's, it was exciting for that reason. I think at the beginning we all had a very strong sense of participating in a startup. It's a, it's a justice startup. Young, committed professionals from around the world, including the U.S., came to help build the new court. 
Yeah, I, I like the thought of working in a brand new place like this. I mean, the, the ICC is pretty much a, a blank canvas at the minute. Like most Sri Lankans, I have an innate uh, interest in uh, in conflict. I come from a family that suffered quite a lot during the, the dictatorship. I saw the problems and I saw also the people's yearning for uh, some kind of justice for, again, uh, for the crimes. It's like taking home a gold medal from the Olympic Games. You know, when you're at the Olympic Games, you're kind of doing it yourself, but once you have that medal, it's for your country, it's for your people. I felt that I wanted to do something somehow to uh, raise the collective consciousness, I guess. I uh, grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust, and I, that's why I was encouraged to work in uh, such an international organization. I believe by, that by participating in the international criminal process, I would contribute in my own little way to restoring the dignity of human beings. Working here has made me realise that justice is easier said than done. The International Criminal Court is a court of last resort. If national systems are working effectively as they should, the ICC will not intervene. When you tell people it's an international criminal court, they automatically think, oh, you're at the top. You know, your job is to be the king court of all courts. You're the king global permanent court. And in fact, that's untrue. We're more like a court at the bottom that catches the cases that fall through because other states or countries are unwi unwilling or unable to do them themselves. To refer the case of, of Lord's Resistance Army to the International Criminal Court because we could not get our hands on Joseph Kony and the leadership of Lord's Resistance Army to prosecute them. In Colombia, we have announced that we are collecting information which may lead to an investigation. the symbol of a new era. This courtroom means that the international community is learning how to work together to protect people in all over the world. All rise, we will leave it. The International Criminal Court is now in session. Could security please bring in Mr. Thomas Lubangadilo, please? The first case to go through the court is referred by Congo and involves a militia leader, Thomas Lubangadilo. Mr. President, Your Honours, this is a case about children. And this is a case about young children under the age of 15 years having been conscripted, having been enlisted, and having been used to participate actively in hostilities. And it is a case about the criminal liability of Thomas Lubanga de Ilo. Mr. President, Honorable Judges, during the previous century, millions of people, many of them children, were victims of unimaginable atrocities. 
the International Criminal Court symbolizes the hope that by ending impunity for such crimes, we might prevent their occurrence and contribute to the peace, security, and well-being of the world. When I went to school, there was no such thing as human rights law. Humanitarian law didn't exist. So I have seen these changes coming in our lifetime. It's a long life. I'm my 87th year, but it's very short. It's a blink in the eye of time, of historical time. We need several generations to continue working on it, and I hope someone will pick up this torch when it slips from my hand, which may be soon. So it can be done, and we should never be defeatist and say it can't be done. It's so obviously correct that law is better than war, and that it's better to live in peace with human rights than to live in war, killing people whom you don't even know.